I went to watch Chronicle in theaters in 2012 when I was 10. I remember where my head was before, during, and after this movie. It traumatized me. I was never the same. I will not forget where I was when I watched Chronicle until I croaked. If you don't know, Chronicle is about a group of guys who all get telekinetic superpowers together and they become best friends. But one of them is an incel. And he goes completely off the rails, he gets completely blackpilled, and he ruins it for the rest of us. It's a very good movie, I would recommend you watch it. But it is impossible to go into this movie today as a full-grown adult man without knowing something is up. But when I was 10, I was completely oblivious to what this had in store. So I think it is only right that I bring you along with me as I riff on the movie that forever altered the way 10-year-old nutties perceives the world. A tiny little retribution for my childhood. I'm filming this. Huh? What? I bought a camera and I'm filming everything from here on out. All right, right out of the gate. I completely forgot that this was a found footage movie because I feel like I remember them literally just giving up halfway through. This incel kid, Andrew, no friends, abusive dad, sick mom. Kids got nothing going for him except for this giant camera. No normal person ever just decides to get up and record every inch of their life unless they are trying to sell things on the TikTok shop. Nobody starts recording until the insane thing happens. It poses a problem for like found footage movies because they always need to have some extra reason on why the main character starts recording everything. We need a little bit of time before the inciting incident to get what the regular world is like for these people. And this movie's justification is I am recording everything everything from now on. He's got a cousin, Matt, who's his only acquaintance. I'm filming everything. Filming everything. Yeah. Okay. And Matt, he's a, he's a wise guy. And this is one of those movies where they drop the meaning of the movie in one line of dialogue in the first act. So young Jordan Peterson over here starts spitting some bars. Have you ever read any Arthur Schopenhauer? No. What is Arthur Schopenhauer? He's this philosopher that I'm reading at the moment. Basically, human beings have to recognize themselves as beings of pure will. All emotional and physical desires can never be fulfilled. So, basically, you're telling me that I should give up on life? Yes. Okay. <laughs> on the nose. And he invites Andrew to this high school house party. There's a party tonight. Okay. And the place is enormous. These movies always have unnecessarily huge high school house parties, DJ and bar service provided. And these characters are literally 16 years old. Like no 16 year old party planner could orchestrate this thing. Our next character, Michael B. Jordan, is literally the perfect person. He's a charismatic popular kid who also has no skeletons in his closet. Dude doesn't even have a bad word to his name. Matt and Michael come across this weird hole that's like 40 yards from the mansion that this party is taking place at, and it's constantly erupting high-pitched screeching noises. Hey, do you guys know how to get back from here? Yes. Did you tell Andrew? <laughs> Andrew was making that sound. Dude, come and listen to this. Listen to this. What? <laughs> Wait, how creepy is that? Michael comes and finds Andrew right before he starts to take the black pill. Bitch. Okay. Ah. And they go over to this hole together because they want to record it. And they go in this hole. What do I look like, CinemaSins? Of course it's the stupidest decision that could be made. And Michael B. Jordan swoops in it like it's a slide at the McDonald's play place. <laughs> okay, put it on the board. You ever heard of Plato's Allegory of Decay? Plato's Allegory of Decay, Jesus Christ. You are insufferable. These glowing, convulsing crystals give our boy superpowers. Andrew's camera could not handle the telekinetic powers. It was broke and left down in the hole. Not sure how they found the footage on that one. I didn't know where to put this in the video, but Andrew is editing this footage in real time throughout this movie, like those clips of him editing the footage that you're watching in the movie. I know that Andrew was using <laughs> those horrible Microsoft Movie Maker transitions. And I can just imagine the editors for the movie like having to cut around <laughs> those. Okay, back to it. With these new telekinetic powers, they decide to throw PNG baseballs at each other. Oh. <laughs> we said un underhand, right? Yeah, it is underhand. underhand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <yeah>. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no <way>. oh, shit. <laughs> wait, 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 that's great. Oh, that is crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And this.
this. This is where this movie had me locked into a false sense of security when I was 10 years old. They do the thing with the Lego. They build, like... <sighs> They build Lego with the Force in this movie. I was literally just playing the Lego Star Wars trilogy before we went and watched this, Dad. These people are living my dream. I want it bad. I still do. Andrew is becoming Zack King, the first echo of the impending avalanche. I swear to God, it is criminal how good the vibes are in this movie 85% of the time. Our protagonists are skipping rocks with their minds. Sexually harassing women. Fun. Also doing cool Pringles tricks and drinking Pepsi Max. Now that's a good time. They decide to start a YouTube prank channel in this convenience store. Driving away carts and scaring little girls. They put a hole in this guy's stomach. <laughs> Move this lady's car to a different parking space while she's inside the store. Very wholesome pranks. The kind of stuff that'll get you comments like, I am glad someone is out here doing the funny and harmless pranks that don't involve threatening violence. Thank you, Ross Creations. Michael also perpetuates racist archetypes. Yes, it was the black guy this time. <laughs> Fun. It's awesome. The boys are being boys. <laughs> Then Andrew swipes a car off the side of the road into a river and almost kills a man. More of an Ethan Bradbury or Sam Pepper prank than I like. Plato's allegory of decay, man. It's a great moment of deconstruction of the facade that this movie has been building up. That telekinesis is just awesome all the way through. This is real life, people. But one intervention later, and we are so back. Completely forget about the horrors of putting a man in the hospital because we are flying now. Literally so rad. The boys decide to join a talent show next. Literally the meme of using real magic to do mundane magic tricks to people. This high school is nuts. They have the literal best opera singer I have ever heard on stage for the high school talent show. That lady is going places. Anyways, the boys have the best magic show ever because they cheated and used real magic. They really should be disqualified. Turns out though, magicians are actually the coolest people alive. And now that Andrew is one, he is welcomed with open arms to another $80,000 high school mansion party. Andrew starts talking about magic to this lady who loves magic. And they go upstairs to do the naughty business while Matt is left downstairs with the camera. When did I become the one who's out here hey, filming myself? Oh, hey. Hey, Casey. I didn't mention this before, but Matt and his ex-girlfriend, who I think left him because he just had too many wrinkles in his brain. Turns out she's a vlogger, too. What gets me going is this found footage movie somehow pulled off a for real shot, reverse shot dialogue scene. I've been thinking if I applied myself, like what I could do, you know, I could really, I could change the world. I mean, it's really been... I mean, You're I drunk. Just, what? Hey, Casey, I've basically been stalking you. Just give all your characters cameras, and then you don't gotta worry about having, like, weird omnipresent voices in the in the ozone layer. That's really all I wanted to say about that. Uh, they talk about nothing important, really. But that lady upstairs is having chunks blown all over her. She got puked on. Even a magician isn't cool enough to withstand that, apparently. So, we're back to square one. Everyone thinks Andrew is a loser who pukes when he sees women and they make fun of him for it. He is starting to go off the deep end for real. A little social hierarchy lesson here. Matt would love this. This is the kid that you need to make friends with. Or at least know that you're on his good side. Because honestly, we don't know what tomorrow brings. He's doing all the telltale signs of being a psychopath. Tearing apart spiders and playing with dead bugs. The part where he rips apart the spider is sick too. Engraved into my noggin. Dealing with this social suicide, Andrew decides to stay in the sky for a while. And Steve gets the feeling that something is wrong. And it is not explained, but apparently whenever you get telekinetic powers, you also get an air tag implanted into your mind because Steve is able to find him in the sky. They get into an argument about whatever and Steve gets lightning wizard monkeyed. You and all of your friends get telekinesis and you can't just be chill. I mean, come on. One bad apple ruins the bunch here. Kid is insane. This movie has transitioned into the Andrew Manifesto. <laughs> 
<laughs> he goes full Jeffrey Dahmer on this kid. Who made fun of him? Pulling out his teeth. Hey, Wayne! <laughs> and inspecting the precision of the pull. Real? Messed up stuff. I feel like today's filmmakers rely more on the audience's knowledge of like fourth grade science than they did even tw like 12 years ago when this was made. Because I don't know if this is for the dumb general audience, but Andrew straight up reads the Wikipedia article on apex predators to the audience. There's this thing, right? It is called the apex predator. Right, and basically what this is, is the strongest animal in the ecosystem. Like this is something he just discovered. Matt is the smart one, dude. You're trying too hard. The Manosphere strikes again. He's completely black-pilled. Lion does not feel guilty when it kills a gazelle, right? You do not feel guilty when you squash a fly. It's done. He's gone off the incel deep end. If Andrew were alive today, he would be edging, gooning, looks maxing, bone mashing. He was but a seedling. Andrew's mom is sick. And her medicine is really expensive. So now, not only is Andrew a victim of his dad and high school, but he's also a victim of the American healthcare system. He is now a firefighter man and begins stealing money from all kinds of places, starting with the pockets of the people who called him stupid. This is an iconic moment right here. Another thing seared into my brain stem. Back before I rediscovered this movie, I would just call it the movie where they shoot real life guns with their uh, I'd call it the movie where the movie where they use hand pistols and they work. He is bagging and tagging people like it's GTA. Just leaving them in the street. He even robs a gas station. I love how the money just flies into the bag. Like the the use of the powers is very good. It's like payday or something. This gas station robbery doesn't go well. Couldn't escape the two-star rating. This gets Andrew hospitalized, but at least the doctors have set up his live stream. They get it. I hate his dad. This guy sucks. He is berating his dying child because his wife died while he was looking for him. If anyone needs to feel the wrath of Andrew, it's this guy. He's got all that's coming to him. Andrew wakes up and straight up demolishes this hospital room. Him breaking the cast is terrifying and the way he is charging up his power or whatever and the camera is slowly being pulled towards him with his mind powers is an awesome in-universe reason to have a zooming shot before the reveal that he like is fine and wakes up really really creative andrew is rampaging through the city so hard that his air tag sends a signal to matt Here something's right. wrong something's wrong with andrew matt shows up at the scene of the crime and saves andrew's dad not deserved i mean of all of the deaths in this this movie this is the one that needed to happen but that is one more person that can subscribe to gag nutties today silver linings people that vlogger girl follows matt to andrew where she is then taken on a universal studios ride through seattle matt comes in clutch and ends this ride but he misses the part where he tells the riders to scream loud enough to successfully complete the mission to end the ride <laughs> <laughs> Matt and Andrew duke it out in midair like real men do. No one wants to evacuate the nearby buildings because everybody is too busy recording on their iPads. Andrew grabs every camera in a one mile radius. And this is where I thought we abandoned the found footage thing. But it's actually just like he has all the cameras orbiting around him at every angle. So in universe reason why we just can ignore the justifications on how to film this found footage. A lot of those are in this movie. The police are throwing their best officers towards this case and they cannot figure out what is going on in the sky right now. And who on earth is even recording these random camera angles from the ground? I mean, nothing's even happening there until that car goes into the building. But you wouldn't know if the car was going to go into that building. Are they time travelers? Do we need the CinemaSins banners again? Is this a possible crossover with Project Almanac? No one knows. The found footage cinematic universe grows larger every day. And this is more like a crowd sourced footage movie <laughs> because there are like 300 cameras that this movie was stitched out of matt and andrew get into a screaming contest near this statue that i'm gonna look up uh in seattle it has a trident and here is the resolution to plato's allegory of decay i've never read it andrew tries one last time to reason with andrew 
wait. Matt tries one last time to reason with Andrew, but he's been engulfed by the alt-right pipeline and has to be killed with a spear, per the manual. Matt flies away with Andrew's camera to Tibet. You made it. Uh, call back to lunch whenever Andrew said that he really wanted to go to Tibet and they made fun of him for it. Really sweet. How on earth was this footage found? Did these monks deliver this camera to 20th Century Fox? I mean, I have so many more questions. I mean, what even was the thing that gave them their power? And the movie's over. Okay, so that was Chronicle. I would highly recommend this movie, especially going into it not knowing very much about it. So, I mean, sorry about that, but I feel like the ride that it takes you on is crazy if you don't know what you're getting into. And don't get Disney Plus thinking that they have this movie because Google will lie to you. Disney Plus does not have this movie. Learn that the hard way. The movie may be fully uploaded on YouTube for free if you want to give it a search, but you didn't hear that from me. Anyway, there are more found footage movies that are not in the horror style that the film genre is known for, like Project Almanac or Earth to Echo, which I don't see anybody talk about. They always talk about the horror found footage, which is like, you know, the concrete that builds the foundation, but not a lot of people talk about those movies. I want to talk about them, those movies. <sighs> Has anybody else seen those movies? Uh, good question for you to answer for you to answer in the comments. Have a good day.